what you're going to try to do is come up with a settlement, a negotiated settlement. The idea that many people in the West have, and I think this is especially true in Germany and in France, is that Ukraine cannot win a meaningful military victory. And if you arm Ukraine and encourage it to continue fighting, Ukraine will be destroyed. And the best solution for Ukraine is a negotiated settlement. And the best way to get there is not to fuel the fires by giving Ukraine more and more weapons. Mm -hmm. So I think that is, I, I think that's what the present German government would like to do. But it's very difficult to do for two reasons. One, American pressure, and two, public opinion in Germany. Many Germans think that what the Russians have done is unacceptable and that Germany has a responsibility, a moral responsibility, not just a strategic responsibility, but a moral responsibility to support the Ukrainians by arming them. But there's a counter argument to that, which is that that's not the smart policy and it's not the best policy for the Ukrainians. That if you arm the Ukrainians, in the end, it's going to do grave damage to the country of Ukraine. Ukraine is going to end up getting destroyed because the West cannot give Ukraine enough arms to allow it to defeat Russia. And as the West arms Ukraine, the Russians will react and the Russians will end up doing even more damage to Ukraine than has been done already. So that argument says that it is morally wrong to arm the Ukrainians because you're going to lead them down the path to disaster. So you have to figure out in your head what you think is going to happen if you do arm the Ukrainians or if you don't arm the Ukrainians and pursue a negotiated settlement instead. My argument is it would be better not to arm the Ukrainians and to work to, you know, find some sort of diplomatic solution to this conflict. Uh, that would be good for Ukraine. Uh, and, and therefore, that is sort of the morally best strategy. In but your view. In my view. But of course, that's a minority view at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Their view is that we're responsible. Mm -hmm. Their view is that if there had been no threat of NATO expansion into Ukraine, none of this would happen. I think they're correct. I think if Angela Merkel had prevailed over George W. Bush at, uh, at the NATO summit in Bucharest in April 2008, if she and Sarkozy had beaten back Bush and we had never moved forward uh, on bringing Ukraine into NATO, that there'd be no war today and indeed Crimea would still be part of Ukraine. Uh, I think this was a catastrophic decision. And I think, again, Angela Merkel understood that. And, uh, but she did not prevail because the Americans basically drive the train. The Russians know this. The Russians don't want to speak to the Germans or the French. I mean, they'll talk to them, but they don't really care what they have to say because they understand that it's the Americans who drive the train. The problem is, from a Russian perspective, it would be best if none of those countries were in NATO. The Russians were not powerful enough to stop Romania, Poland, and the Baltic states from getting into NATO. But Ukraine it was a different matter. Ukraine is much more important strategically to the Russians right, than those other countries are. And furthermore, the Russians are now powerful enough to prevent Ukraine from joining NATO. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I think Trump's, if you, if you think about it in terms of Trump's basic instincts, uh, the answer is clearly no. Uh, first of all, Trump hated NATO, and if he had his way, he would have put an end to NATO. So we're not even talking about NATO expansion, we're just talking about NATO's existence. He didn't like NATO. Uh, furthermore, he was interested in having good relations with Vladimir Putin, he didn't view Putin as a bad guy, so he would not want, would not have wanted to antagonize Putin. And finally, he thought the real threat that the United States faced was China. Uh, he was obsessed with the China threat and he wanted to pivot to Asia. So I, I think that if Trump had been in charge and Trump had been able to get his way, 
this crisis would not have happened. But I believe Trump would not have gotten his way. Uh, I think that Trump was no, uh, no match for what we call the blob, the, the foreign policy establishment in the United States. Uh, the foreign policy establishment beat Trump back. Uh, Trump was elected to fundamentally change American foreign policy, and, and he failed, just as Obama failed before him. Uh, the foreign policy establishment in the United States is very powerful, and it tends to get its way. Uh, so I think even if Trump had been president, uh, it wouldn't have mattered. Not because his basic instincts were wrong. I think his basic instincts were right, but I think his basic instincts would have been overridden by the interests uh, uh, or the thinking uh, of the foreign policy establishment. And we'd be in pretty much the same situation today uh, under Trump that we are with Biden. Zelensky has to deal with the Americans, and the Americans are not interested in making Ukraine neutral, because that would be a loss for the Americans. The Americans are in this to win. And if Ukraine cannot become a part of NATO, you have a velvet divorce, Ukraine cannot become part of NATO, Ukraine becomes a neutral state, that means the Americans lost. It's a Russian victory. So the Americans are not gonna accept it. The ultra-right in Ukraine is not gonna accept it. So even if Zelensky does accept it, I don't think it's gonna be possible for him to uh, carry the day on that one. I hope I'm wrong. I mean, who knows for sure? Then there's the whole question of territory. Put yourself in Putin's shoes. You've just gone through these bloody three plus months of war. You've conquered about 20% of the territory in Ukraine. Are you gonna give that territory up? Uh, I don't think so. And it doesn't look like the Russians are giving that territory up now. It looks like they're Russifying that territory. They're giving passports to people. They're, you know, reinstating the Russian language and so forth and so on. I mean, I, I find it very hard to believe that the Russians are going to give up any of this territory that they've conquered. Well, if that's true, are the Ukrainians going to cut a peace deal where they lose 20 or 25 percent of their country? I don't think so. Are the Americans going to go along with that? I don't think so. Uh, and then there are sanctions. The Russians are going to want a deal that takes away the sanctions. Getting rid of those sanctions is going to be wickedly difficult, right? So every way you look at this, it's just hard to see.